Somebody get me two throwback jerseys, two Nike headbands, and a pair of white forces. Indie tribe save lives. And make sure when you spell that name, it's all lowercase yeah. with a period. Really came in the game of fortune and fame and said I didn't want it. They doubted, they doubted. I found a team, we met on lane, and now they all say that we bout it, we bout it. We got more rings than Audis, I'm loudy. My team ring the heat like the Saudis. Live in the south with my family from Cali. And shout out to Bay, we don't live in the valley. No. My Hello. I'm Grant Gonot, and this is the eighth episode of the Modcast. Please, right now, subscribe to our channel, follow our Instagram, and check out our website. And the link to the website will be in the link in the description. So, this eighth episode of the Modcast is going to be about what is dating and what a Christian man should look for in a woman. And so, Beck's going to start things off here on this episode. Yeah, so um, dating isn't outlined per se in the Bible. Right, we don't get a, you know, first dating two twelve. This is how we date, right? We have to. This is the part um, of the Christian life and knowing who God is, and then knowing His Word, that He still speaks to us today and still gives us instructions, and He gives us a manual on how to go about um, dating, which is like a new cultural thing, I guess you could say. Um, but God still gives us an outline and structure for doing so. So um, first to begin, um, dating still um, is just prepping you for marriage, right? Finding out, is this guy, is this girl the girl that I want to spend the rest of my life with, pursuing the Lord with? Um, and so um, it's prepping you for that, but it's important to realize, even though sometimes we say, um, you know, I'm in a relationship when you're dating, you're still single before the Lord. And so that's important to realize, right? You're still brothers and sisters with this boy or with this girl. You're still, um, you're still single in the Lord's eyes. There's no covenant relationship that you entered with another person. Um, you know, the boyfriend shouldn't be leading the girlfriend like a husband should lead the wife because you're not their husband, right? You're not their spiritual leader. You're still just their friend and their brother in Christ. And so that's an important distinction to make, right? Sometimes people fall in the trap. They act like they're married before they're married. Don't fall into that trap. And so we're going to be talking about, that's a little bit of dating, right? Just getting to know, um, you know, someone else before you get married and making that commitment that, you know, you can't break. You make that before the Lord, um, that's the one right there, right? When you say I do, that's the one, right? Mm -hmm. There's no turning or taking it back. Like, that's the person. And that's the one that the Lord um, chose for you to be with and the one you chose to be with. No one was forcing you to say that. You were the one that got up there, made a covenant before the Lord. I'm going to be one with this person for the rest of my life. And so um, dating is, is super important, and it's something that every you know everyone pretty much wrestles with wants to know about how to go about it how to do it in a godly way or sometimes we don't want to know how to do it in a godly way we want to do our own thing and then we pay for it later right we find the you know repercussions or the con consequences for it later because we didn't acknowledge the lord and we didn't bring him into it right we get uh, maybe we start out good maybe we are waiting for that person we are waiting for the lord to bring us that person but we grow impatient and we don't find contentment in the Lord, and instead we try to rush to find the person that we're supposed to be with, not in the Lord's timing. Then we find ourselves in trouble, or you know, just you know, other things, right? We um, think we're married before we're not, um, and so this is important. This topic is important um, because you know, as Christian men, we should be looking for a godly girl, right? And so if you're listening, if you're a guy, these are some good characteristics that you want to find into a girl when you start to date her, before you date her, before you marry. Or if you're a girl listening to this, what are some things um, that you should be striving towards? What are some uh, characteristics that you should be emulating Jesus in? Um, and so it's good to listen in both ways. Maybe you're pretty young and dating's not even in the, you know, the things that you think about. Well, this is all, always good information to store up 
and to think about because God's word never returns void and we're always going to you know, need it in circumstances. That's why we listen to every sermon, even if it doesn't apply to our life right now, because one day it's going to, right? Because we have to store up God's word, um, and we don't want to be caught not knowing what to do when when a situation arises. So let's dive into a couple characteristics of a godly girl, um, that a man should be looking for. And I want to say this right before we begin. Don't be expecting something from a girl uh, that you aren't willing to do yourself, right? Eventually, you know, you're going to be a husband if the dating relationship progresses, you know, and ultimately leads to marriage. You know, you're going to be the, the leader of this girl. You're going to be called to lead her spiritually, you know, and that's a big calling, and you know you can't lead someone well in a place that you've never been. And so if you're looking for a girl and you say, oh man, I want her to have a beautiful relationship with the Lord where she's constantly in her Bible and constantly in prayer, but you haven't touched your Bible in months, how is that going to play out? How is she going to be the one who's, um, you know, pursuing the Lord and you're kind of just lukewarm, cold-hearted? Um, you're going to be unequally yoked, right? You're going to be two different places with the Lord. Um, so you can't be expecting some girl to be this perfect Christian when you're, you know, so far apart from that. Or maybe you're looking and you want a girl to be so amazing in service, but you never serve anybody, right? That's a, you know, that's kind of pharisaical or kind of external, you know, externally motivated with religion, right? You're just looking for someone to do something, but hypocritically, you don't want to do it yourself. And you say you want this in a person, um, but you're not willing to do it yourself. It's like not practicing what you preach, right? Uh, So make sure that these characteristics, you're willing to do yourself. And so the first one I'm going to start with is, is this girl loving? Does she love people well? Uh, You see, Jesus said that the disciples, the Christ followers, should be marked and known by their love. So does this girl love other people? Do other people look at her and say, man, she is so sacrificially loving other people. She's so good at it. She goes above and beyond to meet their needs, to meet their interests, even at the expense of her own. She just loves people. She's always looking for the hurt, the lonely, the outcast. Um... Is she always making time for other people, even when she's tired? Um, You know, how well does she love other people? And you see, as we go through these different characteristics, you're going to find that to a godly person, godliness is attractive, right? To people of the world, other things are attractive, like money, looks, whatever, power. Uh, But to a Christian man or a Christian woman, right, godliness is attractive, Um, And people are going to want that. And before we get more into that, don't try to be godly to attract another girl. That's also like external religion. Mm -hmm. Be godly because God wants you to be holy, right? That's like setting up an idol in your life. That girl might be an idol in your life. If you're trying to be godly just to please her, then that's just superficial. It doesn't mean anything. You need to be transformed in your in your mind and in your heart um, before you are transformed, you know, externally where other people see your works, right? Um, so be godly because God wants you to be holy. So genuinely, you know, pursuing holiness and sanctification that will be attractive to another girl, not some fake holiness that you try to muster up around her, right? That's that's just fake. And even if she uh, does like you for those reasons, once she finds out who you really are, it's going to fall apart, right? So genuinely desire sanctification and holiness. And that's why um, being loving here is so attractive and such a good quality to have because Christ followers should be known by that. But then also think about when you enter the marriage relationship, is she going to prefer you? Is she going to uh, sacrifice for you? Is she going to choose to um, commit to you and love you and prefer you um, even when things get hard? You know, that's attractive. That's something that you want in a partner, someone who's going to hold you up and support you. Um, But then at the same time, this, you know, marriage shouldn't be a one-way relationship. You should be doing the exact same for her to the point where in marriage it says, you know, guys, 
I don't know if you get the severity of this calling, but you're supposed to lay your life down for her, your wife the way Christ did for the church. That's a huge calling. You don't just walk into or stumble into that one day and be good at that job. That's a huge job that takes a lifetime of working at. So are you working at it right now? Are you prepping to get married right now? Are you working on loving people so well that, you know, you can one day say, man, I love my wife like Christ loved the church. That's crazy. That's a big calling. That's a huge thing to say. So is she loving? That's a big thing because Jesus wants you to be known by your love. And a person who's really, God's got a hold of their heart, they're going to be filled with love because God's going to be influencing and filling them to overflowing with love, right? So that's the first one I would say. Another one would be, are they being discipled by an older woman, right? Um, you know, in the Bible, and it talks about, especially in Titus, you know, is the younger woman getting discipled or being taught by an older woman who has more experience and life experience, right? Um, this is attractive because she's humble enough to receive teaching and instruction and advice. Um, and she's getting attention and she's getting cared by and wisdom from another godly woman in the faith. You see, if you're not getting discipled by, you know, a godly girl, um, if she's not getting discipled by a godly girl, then where's she getting her wisdom from? Who's she listening to? Where's she getting her counsel from? Where's she get her counsel from? Uh, because is she listening to the world for advice? Is she listening to, um, you know, her, her parents who might not be godly? I don't know. Is she listening to her friends? Uh, where is she getting her advice from? She's getting it from somewhere. All of us are listening to something or worshiping something, right? So where is she getting that advice from, that real life advice where she can go to that person, they can pray for her, they can lead her to the word, and they can just give her solid biblical um, wisdom and guidance. Um, so is she willing to be discipled? Uh, how about this one? This is a big one that I really like. I think it's so important if you're a Christian guy before you start dating a girl, does she have a respected Christian leader that you can go to and ask about her character? Right? Is there a youth leader? Is there a pastor? Is there, you know, a Christian teacher or mentor that you can go to and ask about their character? Because if not, is she really plugged into community? Because that's one of the biggest things that God calls us to in Scripture is to be in fellowship and to be in a local body. And so mm -hmm. that might not be a good sign if there's no one in her life that you can, you know, go to and, like, sit down and say, hey, is this, like, you know, a good girl that I should be pursuing? Or should I stay away from her? She needs some more time in sanctification. Because obviously her friends are going to tell you, yeah, she's a great girl, blah, 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 because that's her friends. But a respected leader should be able to tell you the truth no matter what it is, right? Um, and so that's a big one. Proverbs says a good name is better than gold or silver, right? Is her reputation among uh, the leaders good and reputable, or is it kind of so-so, average, or, you know, not so good? Mm -hmm. Um so those are a couple points that I think are super important. Does she love well because Jesus loved well? Is she being discipled by someone who's going to give her godly wisdom into sit situations and circumstances in her life? And is there someone you can go to that you respect, that she respects, that can give you a high opinion of her? Um, so those are three, and I'm going to hand it over to Grant to give you some insights from Proverbs 31 about what a godly wife looks like. And so before someone's a wife, right, they're a daughter of the king and they're your, your sister in Christ. And so they don't, people don't just flip the switch in character as soon as they become married, right? So a godly wife doesn't certainly just become a good wife the moment they say, I do. You see, it was years of character that they built up mm -hmm. beforehand. And so that's why Proverbs 31 is applicable, because this good wife had great character before she was married. So yeah. Grant gives us some insight. So, yeah, all the points Beck made are 
really good points and especially the ones of going to a leader and that aren't really ones that are touched on a lot but are true and we need to make sure that their reputation among other people is is one that is well reputable and Mm -hmm. proverbs 31 talks a lot about these traits that we should be hearing about and proverbs 31 is a very in-depth chapter the first nine verses king solomon writes most of proverbs but here we have a different author for the last chapter Mm -hmm. in 31 in the first nine verses really talks is a more dialogue with the son and then verse 10 throughout the rest of the chapter it's the virtuous wife and what she looks like and so going along with everything before we get into it is like beck said marriage prepping that it starts it starts now it doesn't start once you're married Mm -hmm. you're prepping now for it and once we're in marriage there's a lot of virtues all throughout proverbs 31 that we could sit here forever and Mm -hmm. dissect but i think the main verse that sticks out here if we hop down to verse 30 proverbs 31 30 reads charm is deceitful and beauty is passing but a woman who fears the lord she shall be praised and whenever we read this verse especially whenever we're talking about dating in this christian circle a lot of times um it's, it doesn't look, dating in the Christian circle doesn't look near the same as it does in the world. Because a lot of times in the world, it's about who has the best looking girl, who has this and the girl, this, that, all these things that just make them better than others. But right here, we see how charm is deceitful. A lot of the times those things deceive us. In the second part, beauty is passing. Those characteristics that the world look for in beauty are ones that what do they do? They pass away, which we know. Mm-hmm. But uh, And then we hear, but, we, um, second part of verse 30, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And now whenever we read who fears the Lord, a constant theme within the book of Proverbs is fearing the Lord. What is fearing the Lord? The fearing of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of knowledge. Because whenever we're fearing the Lord, which, we ta- which we've talked about in a previous episode, is whenever we truly begin it's whenever we submit to the lord and god is above everything else Mm -hmm. so this woman being talked about here her husband is in her is her number one in her life but god her relationship with the lord takes priority over him Mm -hmm. and other little character traits to pull out from this is we see that she's a hard worker we constantly see just picking up in 13 she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like she is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night. She's constantly working. Mm-hmm. She's constantly being there for her family. She's providing. A lot of times, you know, women are frowned upon in certain aspects in terms of labor and that. But this woman here talked about and described about in Proverbs 31 is one who's a hard worker. Mm -hmm. And you know what is a really interesting character trait around about this woman? She's not pointing at herself and saying, I'm doing this. She does this all behind the scenes, it seems. Mm -hmm. She's doing this all in a gentle place of confinement that isn't under the spotlight. And because... Um, connecting this with verse 30, she ultimately fears the Lord. And whenever we fear the Lord, what are we not concerned about? We're not concerned about man's approval. Mm -hmm. And we see that all throughout the Gospels is the Pharisees, Pontius Pilate, seeking man's approval. And Jesus ultimately talks about how man's approval is what's going to stop a lot of people from doing things. But this woman here She's not one who is concerned about man's approval. She's Mm -hmm. concerned about the Lord and has her priorities straight. And so that's another point to make is that this woman has her priorities straight. And you see all throughout this chapter, it's very vivid imagery of the time that Proverbs was written. Obviously, this is an old book. You see a lot of things about merchants, um, certain colors, certain linens and that, that fit the context of this time period. And it just shows that uh, shows the richness of when this was written and the woman that was truly to be sought out during this time was one who was well honored as well. Mm-hmm. So it talks about in the final verse of Proverbs 31, 
give her of the fruits of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates, she, she will be known for her works. But mm-hmm. once again, she's not the one praising herself. praising herself. She comes in a humble spirit, a mm-hmm. gentle spirit. And I think we can all agree as Christian men that those are all attributes that we ought to seek mm-hmm. in a woman, and especially in terms of marriage in the long run, is we need a woman who... Um, from men that we're not concerned about beauty and these things that are fleeting and pass away, Mm -hmm. but one who is fearing the Lord above all else. Because whenever she's fearing the Lord above all else, then our relationship with her is going to be even better because she understands Mm -hmm. where we play. And um, to connect that with dating, that's one thing that I think we, when going into dating, you really need to weigh and see how much are we depending? Where's the way, the seesaw of depending on each other? Both parties, members, should be fearing the Lord and keeping that relationship first. Because if not, that sometimes one person's relying more on the other. And guess what? When one person's relying more on the other, we usually don't, the person usually doesn't meet those standards. Mm-hmm. We run out of fuel easily. But whenever we're in the we're at, whenever we're in the word and understand the Lord, our love is more pure, more perfect, because people, our relationships with people are being put in the places that they were intended to be put. We're not, we're not here expecting all of these things that we usually do whenever we're looking through the wisdom of the world. And so, yeah, Proverbs 31 uh, just talks about a lot of these things that we ought to seek and Verse 30 is really, you get, you read throughout this whole chapter, starting in verse 10 there, and then you hit verse 30, and that's really the bold verse that sums up the entirety of the chapter is that she fears the Lord. And one other, just one point to hit is she considers others over herself. Mm -hmm. She's one who's also a counselor. Mm -hmm. She can, she can give advice to other women. She's not one who is... People are seeking this woman. She's one who is wise. Mm-hmm. And she's and it all connects to that verse 30. She's fearing the Lord. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that is what there is to draw from Proverbs 31. We could go much deeper in it. But Beck's going to hit some other key points. Yeah, so I just wanted uh, to get good perspective on the relationship. Um, because you don't want to end up... And that goes back to the unequally yoked thing. Um, just asking this question to yourself before you start dating, while you're dating. Are you guys heading in the same direction? Are you guys aiming to end up at the same place? Do you guys both want to become more like Jesus? You see, the way a dating relationship um, starts to be successful and ultimately how a marriage is successful is if both of your eyes are solely fixed on the Lord and both of you guys are fearing God and then you look over to your right and you see your partner also doing the same thing, striving for holiness, striving um, to look more like Jesus Christ because you guys are both going to the same place, you both share a common goal, you guys are now one when you become married. You can't be going in two separate places. That's not going to work, right? It's a tough marriage if you guys are going to two separate places now that you're one flesh, one body, you're one. You guys have to be single-minded in your focus and becoming more like the Lord and loving people like he loves people. Uh, So question to ask yourself, are you guys both going to the same place? Are you guys both heading down the same path? And then another good question to reflect on, to ask, does God have all of her heart? You know, as you become married, the man is going to be um, tasked with leading the woman. And what if um, God calls you to go start a church somewhere or to go be a missionary somewhere? Is she going to say no out of fear because she wants to live this comfortable lifestyle? Or does God have all of her heart? And she said, she humbly, even if she doesn't want to, she submits to you and says, okay because I trust you and because I trust that you've been hearing from the Lord and I trust your leadership and guidance. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to trust you on this one. I'm going to do as you say. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do because 
as long as it aligns just with Scripture because, you know, I'm your wife. I'm supposed to submit to you and submit to your decisions even if I have a disagreement uh, because you don't want to get to the point where, you know, you're in this relationship, you're in this marriage, and God calls you to do something, and you can't because your your wife wants to stay behind because God doesn't have all of her heart. And then on the other side of that, man, don't be in a marriage relationship where you're supposed to be leading this woman. God has all of her heart, and he doesn't have all of yours. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a sad place to be in. You're not loving your wife like Christ loves the church, if that's the case. You guys have to love Christ so much um, to be able to really fully love your wife. So make sure God has all of your heart, um, but also look at, um, you know, the other person that you're looking to date, that you're looking to marry. Man, does God have a grip on their life? Are they dominated by the fear of the Lord and what he wants to do? And, you know, all these things that we've talked about, man, the Proverbs 31 girl, no one's perfect. Man, no one's the whole P31. No one does God really have all of their heart, right? But are they really making an effort by, you know, yielding their lives to the Holy Spirit, letting the Lord Is there do fruit? what they want? Is there fruit? Can you look at Galatians 5 and say, man, there's, there's beauty from her life, from her characteristics that's just flowing from a place of her being with the Lord and having a great relationship with the Lord. Um, so, you know, no one's perfect, but is she making strides? I'm mean, allowing the Lord to work on her heart and work on her and work on her character. Um, so these have been, we just touched base on a couple things. Um, I, I guess if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We'll try to answer them. Um, you know, we'd love to, you know, show you some scripture, give you some advice, um, you know, this wasn't a comprehensive review of every single characteristic or everything about dating, but just a little segment to give you guys some wisdom from the word, um, you know, in general guidelines from scripture. Um, and so, you know, let us know if this type of content helped you, um, what kind of things you would like to hear from us in the future so that we can address them. Um, but thank you guys for listening, uh, to what we had to say. We hope you guys, we pray the whole goal behind this is to see you guys prosper in relationships and see you guys prosper with the Lord. And we know that dating is a big area that a lot of you guys are thinking about, struggling with, wanting to know answers. Yeah. Um, and so that's why we included this. Uh, we know it's big in a lot of your guys' lives. And so we hope this video really helped. We're praying that this helps you guys because we want to see you guys succeed in the Lord genuinely. Um, And so thank you guys for listening. That's kind of what we have in this segment. If you guys have more questions, if you want more things answered, we'd love to do another segment on it. Yeah. And so to close out, I'm just going to hit two verses in Proverbs 16 that are generally similar. Verse 3 reads in Proverbs 16, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in this dating realm, we're in a rush. Mm -hmm. We don't embrace the weight there's this season of singleness is for a reason Mm -hmm. um once we get married a lot of times we don't take on all of the thoughts of okay now there's the potential for children Mm -hmm. there's this potential and opens up the door to all these things how what are both of us we're working two jobs look like what are the financial situation look like we don't take on all these things and we're in such a rush of what the world is showing us to get into this relationship And whenever we commit our works to the Lord, our thoughts will be established. And that's something to ask ourselves. Are we truly committing our work to the Lord? What is the significant other we may be looking at? What do they look like in ministry to the Lord? And the other verse I want to hit is verse 9 in the same chapter of Proverbs 16. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Ultimately, whenever we see someone that we may be interested in. If we try and pursue that without taking the Lord into account, 
He's the one who directs our steps and is sovereign. So we're not going to win our way. And ultimately, he might let us win our way. And like it talks about in Proverbs, he's going to not let us win, but he's going to let us taste of our own fruit. Mm. So we shouldn't be a rush into this topic that we're talking about because it's a very sensitive topic that stirs a lot of emotional and sensual and sentimental pleasures in the heart. And people can be very hurt by these things. And a lot of times just get blurred ideas of what love is. But whenever we look at the Garden of Eden, we see its true intended purpose. And that's what we're truly trying to elaborate on here Mm -hmm. and show you guys is whenever Adam was, whenever Eve gave God to Adam, he wasn't searching. He was asleep. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a cliche thing a lot of people say, but that's a very big point is a lot of times... A lot of, <laughs> that's a very mm-hmm. cliche saying, but it's true. A lot of times we are in such a rush seeking, and that's not bad to seek, but whenever the seeking process is over the process of our relationship with the Lord, well then we can look at Proverbs 16.3 and we can say that our works aren't being committed to him. Mm-hmm. So our thoughts aren't going to be established. That's some practical insight of how to look at the scripture and apply it. So yeah, like Beck said, We're hoping and praying that these insights help you guys. And we hope that if you you can drop stuff in the comments because there's a lot more to address regarding this topic in terms of distractions that come along the way that we could go on for uh, forever and how to avoid those and how to cultivate other areas in our lives here. And we're looking to strive for godliness as men of God on this channel and There's many other ideas that we would like to hear from you guys and we want to know and we're hoping and praying that this helps you. So this is the conclusion to the eighth episode of the Modcast. And um, once again, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Instagram and check out our website. And this, along with all of our other episodes, will be up on audio platforms very soon. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. Peace.